Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this edition of The Mountain Gardener. Your host, Ken Lane, here every week uh, for the last... Well over 10 years. I, I should look at that. I wonder how long I've been doing this. 15, since the mid-2000, 2003? Can that, is that possible? Anyway, just having fun, talking about plants, connecting plants and people, and, and then helping you in the higher elevations to work with the rhythms, work with the environment, the seasonality of plants, instead of working against them. We are truly, truly different than anywhere else in the country. And once you realize that and tweak just a few things, your thumbs just turn a shade greener, just like that. And it doesn't take much. This week, I want to cover the nine tasks that you really, really need to get on and get done, uh, like, like in the next couple, two, three weeks. So by the end of March, for sure, you have to be done with these nine things if you're going to have a really nice landscape. I just was helping a customer uh, that came in and and they're starting to see their plants wake up. So my hydrangeas, personally, are starting to come up uh, from, from last year's branches. The potentia. This is a cute little shrub down, oh, just above knee high or so. Kind of ball shaped. Uh, two by two by two, maybe three feet, something like that. And it's starting to leaf out. And so it's really exciting. Do you need to be worried about plants that are starting to leaf out if we start to get a heavy storm or it gets really cold that night. or and, and the short answer to that is, no, you're fine. Don't worry about them. These plants are, they're mountain plants. They're used to this extreme temperature. This week we've had, uh, you know, it'd be 65 degrees during the day and it'd be 24 during the night, like 40 degrees temperature swings. The plants you put into the ground need to be able to adapt and 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 thrive in that type of extreme environment. We are at high elevation. All of us, it doesn't matter which where you're at. I mean, you might be tuned in from Kingman to to the White Mountains and Flagstaff all the way down to North Anthem, you know, Spring Valley, uh, Montezuma's Castle, those those areas and Cottonwoods, Sedona and everything in between. We all need plants that can deal with these extremes. We are all going to get down to freezing. We're going to have some chilling hours. It's going to get, you know, you might be, uh, uh, Cordis Lakes might be down to, you only get down to 10, 15 degrees. And Flagstaff, you might go sub-zero, but, but all plants need to be able to handle that kind of cold. If you're bringing plants up from the valley, I, I say the valley being, Phoenix, Flatlanders from Tucson, Phoenix, uh, Casa Grande, those areas, um, those plants that grow down there have zero antifreeze in them. And so if they go even close, they get to 40 degrees, they're starting to whimper and shiver and they just want their parka and their wool socks. Uh, and if they go to 32 or, or 30 or 25 or, or teens, uh, they're dead. Just like that, they will freeze and not come back. You need plants that can adapt to this warm days, cold nights. And if you know that, and some of those plants would be like lilacs. They're famous, absolutely famous up here. Yes, just like your grandmother grew in her backyard and the entire, you know, the, the hedgerow of lilacs and would fill up the entire part of the landscape with just this wonderful, sweet fragrance. They love everything about the mountains of Arizona, all elevations. They like them all from, 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 from 3,000 all the way up to, to 8,000. Lisa and I went, uh, we went side by side razor ride. So it's a, so a, a four wheel drive thing. It's a go kart, four wheel drive go kart. We went up to Mount Union. I think that's 8,000 feet. That's just, you go out Senator Highway from Prescott and you go up and over. Uh, the hill, it was snowing up there. It wasn't down here in Prescott, but what we elevated 3,000 feet, and all of a sudden, yeah, it's snowing, and you couldn't even see. There was, we were the first ones on this road. We were, sometimes we're driving going, is that the road, or is that the road? It's just covered in snow. That's just out of Prescott. Our house is at 5,700 feet. We went 23 miles, went up to 8,000 feet. If I'd gone 23 miles out, out uh, 
uh, Highway 69, we'd be down to 4,000 feet. We go over 15 miles over to Kirkland, it's 4,000, 4,200 feet. It, we, we just have all these pockets of extremes every place. And so the one question that came up last week's, at last week's garden class was, well, you're talking about Prescott. We're here in Prescott in a greenhouse at Waters Garden Center. And you're saying it does well here. Yeah, but I'm in Prescott Valley. Will it do well there? Oh, and someone else raised their hand going, I'm from Sedona. We get quite a few folks coming to the hill. They, they come over to shop at Costco and Trader Joe's, and then they stop by the garden center because they heard the radio show or, or whatever. They like nice garden centers. Uh, do we? They go, well, what about us? And, and like, what it comes down to is we're all the same. It's, there's, there might be one zone difference, you know, Spring Valley, Cortis Lakes, you might be a zone eight, uh, Skull Valley, uh, uh, Kirkland, Will Hoyt, Hillside, you're zone eight, uh, Prescott's a zone seven, you folks up in, in, uh, Flagstaff, White Mountains, uh, uh, Williams, you all are probably a zone five or six. We're all pretty much, you need plants and go down to 10 degrees plus or minus 10 degrees. And the way those zones work, so you're reading these national tags at your local garden center, say, oh, grows in zone seven. That's good. If you're a zone seven, so Prescott's a zone seven, that's a plant that can go down to five, 10 degrees. You can grow in that yard, in your yard, if you're a zone seven, you can grow a zone seven, a zone six, a zone five, anything lower than your zone. So your zone plus all the, the lower numbers, you're good to go. And what that is, that's a freeze rating. It's a national rating. They've put these plants into cold climates and a, a zone two, three, four, they might go down to minus 20 degrees, minus 30 degrees, minus 40 degrees. So obviously you, in Prescott, we only get down to zero every once in a while. It is once in a blue moon. I mean, it's so rare. I can't remember. It's probably even 12 years since we went to zero degrees. But we will often go down to single digits. I think at my house, we've been down to 13 degrees so far. And so those are that's a zone seven kind of plant. But obviously, I could grow a zone three plant that goes down to minus 40. It's not going to freeze. What you'd want to stay away from are those numbers higher than your zone. So Prescott's a zone seven. I do flirt pretty strongly. I play with, I'm a gardener, I'm playing with zone eight plants because it opens up, allows me to grow more kinds of plants. But then it gets really dicey. Zone nine, for sure, it will not grow here in Prescott. There's no, no amount of protection, insulation, covering, unless I bring it into a greenhouse or into an Arizona room or protect it as a house plant somehow, it's not going to winter over for us. The cold will take it out. So that's those zones for you in, in a nutshell. Most of us check out where your zone is and you can go to, to zone, you know, show my garden zone and it'll pop up with a chart going, it'll show you, you type in your zip code and go, oh, you're a zone four, five, three, two, one, eight. Phoenix is going to be more like 10, 12. Those plants can take zero cold at all. And so you really do need to hone in on that. So at the garden center, this week we did harvest our very first crop of hanging baskets. They're mainly going to be petunias, petunia variations. Next week, I'm hoping to get some geraniums. Those are zone eight kinds of plants. They'll go into 20 degrees, high 20 degrees. They'll take some frost. They might stop growing or stop blooming, but they definitely won't die. And so we brought in the first crop. Ooh, gardeners are crazy. They'll want to plant some. They'll hang it on the front, off their front posts, these beautiful hanging baskets, and they'll bring them in every night, or they'll cover them every night, or they'll uh, I bring in a few of them for gardeners every, just a few. I think we had 50 baskets. I sell hundreds. Mother's Day weekend, we'll bring in hundreds of baskets uh, ready to go, because now we're past frost. You can have whatever you want. You don't have to take care of them at all. They just go. But for those few, next week, I hope to get... Our first crop, I, we're close, first crop of tomatoes and peppers. They are not going to winter over. They're not going to take our cold nights. But for the gardeners that want to roll them out of the garage, have them get some sunshine, roll them back in, or those that have greenhouses, that's cheating. You can protect them no matter what. We'll have just a few of them. But most of our you know, organic, non-GMO veggies, that's what we're famous for, most of them will come in April. You get another month out before you really get into it. 
lot in store for you this segment. We got Lisa Watersling coming with your garden questions right after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. The colors of spring are bursting at Waters 58 Spring Open House. Talk directly to our farmers as they show off the newest flowers, brightest evergreens, and freshest new bloomers. Friday, we show off this year's showiest plant introductions. Saturday and Sunday, it's impromptu garden classes, sidewalk art, and drawings. Join the garden fun at Waters Garden Center's 58th Spring Open House, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, March 13th through 15th. 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Hi, Waters here with this week's Plant of the Week and our show-off for Scythias. A new standout for Scythia with very large, very bright solar yellow flowers that adorn the plant from head to toe. Relax. This showy spring shrub is beautiful and requires no pruning or cleanup. This show-off is just days away from bloom and limited. Don't wait until these big bulb for Scythia are gone at just $39. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love show-off for Scythia love to shop. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. And we are with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what's what are other people in the neighborhood talking about? And so that we try to share that because I think there's some things to learn. Welcome to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. Kind of exciting. Last night, we had our first full staff meeting of spring. <laughs> like all the yeah. entire team came together after hours. We feed them mm-hmm. cookies and train them. And just training. Tra- lots of training. Lots of new people. So the talent yeah. roaming around in the streets is impressive. <laughs> we got some great we do. We new do. staff it's, members. It's always fun to bring on new members and see what talents and skills they have and what they bring to us it's fun so one thing i shared with them last night when you come to work for waters garden center we fully expect we want you by the end of the season to be two things be super knowledgeable way more knowledgeable than you are right now on plants Mm -hmm. well that's obvious you can learn that through osmosis and then we're a business we want you to learn business ideas Uh, so we taught them some business things just how we operate we're kind of an open book and so we think that helps them to see oh we're just like ken and lisa and we're just people like you and this is just like a house budget only it's on a really grand scale called commercial (laughs) size stuff but Mm -hmm. here here's what we're looking at here's what here's how we're doing we've got a scorecard (laughs) scorecard and we have this thing called the great game of business that we share. We kind of rally the whole team around and yeah. help them to learn how mom and pop operations operate. And I think they appreciate that. Oh, I agree. Don't you think? I agree. I think a lot of people don't understand retail truly yeah. and how it works. You know, you, you just you go shop and all that kind of stuff. Or maybe you just work there, but you're not really paying attention. But there's a lot that goes on. I think some of the new folks, it was like deer in the headlights. Oh, They're going, uh, what did I just walk into? Uh, too much information. Too yeah. much information. Too, too, TMI, TMI. So, <laughs> we just scare them off, hon. But, but it'll, they'll come around. They'll come, they'll come to they'll, it. We'll it's see exciting. if they show up to work this week. <laughs> the older folks, like we have team members that have been here for I mean, many, many years. Right. So this is the place where employees come to put their roots down. They just come and they don't, they don't go anywhere. Which is part of the charm, part mm-hmm. of you and I leading, right. and then community and and that kind of stuff. But um, some of the older folks, I think they really like knowing being part, oh, sure. and it, it pulls them in to be part of the team. They're mm-hmm. part, they feel like they've got some ownership in it, which they do. Oh yeah. So anyway, this is not about us. It's just fun to have everyone <laughs> together. I get excited every time the. I just can't hits. believe it's like spring I know. already. It's like where <laughs> did. Great. January and February go. It's Remember crazy. last year though, it was like oh. uh, a foot of snow on the ground. Yes. Like, was that the snow apocalypse or was that the week <laughs> prior? It might have been last year. I think it, last week, last year. I think or something. it was last week. Anyway, but, yeah. I'm Love glad snow. it's nice weather, not yeah. scraping snow. I agree. So, what about garden questions? Well, a lot of our people are excited about spring coming too. Yeah. So, Danielle has a question. 
pertaining to spring. Her daffodils are already up and showing their pretty little heads. And of course, she's worried because she's used to spring in the mountains. Yeah. It will get cold. It may even possibly snow again. Yeah. Uh, so her question is, does she need to protect them? Or are they going to be oh, okay? Yeah. yeah, don't don't even worry about those, Danielle. That it's like they're they're they've got they're used to this. So daffodils are famous in the mountains of Arizona. They're kind of bulletproof. Animals don't eat them. Every spring you can you can watch them grow, and and they're coming up. Ours at home are maybe not quite a foot tall, but they're getting close to blooming. Really? Yeah, in the backyard they're uh-huh. beautiful, just beautiful. Huh. And so I, I don't worry about those at all. So if it snows, if it gets frost, if it goes down to single digits, it doesn't matter. They've got enough antifreeze in them to where they just withstand whatever comes their way. Mm-hmm. So don't worry about those things. I would say the same thing about forsythias and your, your uh, uh, red buds, your, your crab apples, your lilacs, things that are forming buds or showing color or starting to leaf like uh, the potentias. Yeah. It's a famous little two by two by two uh, shrub starting to leaf out in the garden center. There's no way holding them back. And they're right out there exposed. If it gets cold, we don't care. We don't cover them. We don't do anything because they're used to this. They, they like it. They've got enough antifreeze. They, they can protect themselves. So, yeah, go enjoy spring and watch them grow. Fertilize them, if anything, to get them to bloom a little longer, a little brighter, more fragrance in them. Mm-hmm. Okay, next question is from Brian. He has a problem that's actually fairly common around the Prescott area, at least. Uh, He has deer rubbing their antlers on his aspens. He wants to know, are there any sprays or repellents that are effective for that? Yeah, those young bucks. They got those horns on them. They're covered (laughs) in velvet, and they're trying to rub the velvet off so they can start sparring for the ladies. So, yeah, that's pretty common. They'll get on... uh, um, what, willows, uh, fruit trees sometimes. Cottonwoods. Yes, cottonwoods, elms, sometimes mm-hmm. they'll do that. So very, very common. So what to do? They're going to keep rubbing that that's bothering them. They want that, that velvet off of those antlers. And so the only thing you really can do is fence them out or wrap the tree. We've had pretty good luck at if you wrap that area where they're rubbing, that scar that uh, they're peeling the bark off mm-hmm. with of all things, bird netting. I know it says it's not deer netting, it's bird <laughs> netting. But if you take some of that, wrap it a couple times loosely around that and then kind of staple gun it to the bark, mm-hmm. um, they'll stop rubbing on that. I think they get caught up in it. They, they don't know what it is. It's different. There's too many other aspens in your neighborhood probably that they'll go, ah, oh, that's not even worth thinking about. That's just bothersome. I'm going over here and rub these trees. You're trying to train those deer to go over there and bother your neighbors instead of your trees. Otherwise, they'll keep coming back to the same trees over and over until they rub the bark off. And they become girdled, and it they can actually kill the tree if you're mm-hmm. not careful. They can damage that trunk yeah. or that sucker or that mm-hmm. aspen piece. Yep. So the repellents really aren't effective for that because they're not really eating no it. not eating at all i mean you it. could yes i'll sell you a repellent we got some great ones but they really haven't been that effective they're more for animals eating the actual foliage or the stems or the branches not so much rubbing the antlers this is a u- unique thing that happens kind of this time of year every yeah. year if you're up in deer country it's a mule deer yeah. that's what they're going after so um, much more effective for porcupines, for, for yeah. things that are peeling bark off. The repels all. That's the one you want to use, repels all by Bonide. It's great, but not so much with rubbing antler stuff. If you can maybe take the bottle and bop the deer on the nose, <laughs> it would be highly effective. But otherwise, yeah, and it, it could be dangerous at that point. Yeah, they, you don't want to when do they're that. in rut, deers can be quite dangerous. Right. You want to give them some space. They can rear up on their hind legs and they can just knock you out in a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. So that wound that has been caused by the rubbing, what's yeah. the best way to clean that up and take care of it? Yeah, that one's pretty easy. Take a pocket knife and just kind of, or, or razor blade, kind of smooth out that cut. The, the, you don't want it to be torn and ragged. Mm-hmm. You want it to be a smooth cut. Then you can take some pruning paint. we got an aerosol can. You spray on there. It'll keep the bugs out. And then I would maybe even consider wrapping it with a tree wrap. They actually have wrapping that you can wrap it up like a bandage. Right. Uh, And then fertilize, fertilize, fertilize. I can't emphasize fertilize enough because then that new ring of wood will grow and it will start to heal over that wound. It'll actually grow right over top of that. It might take a year or two Mm -hmm. for that to happen, 
This is your time. The faster you can get that thing to grow, the more r- robust it is, the faster it will heal over that wound. Okay. All right. Next question is from Janet. She has not pruned her roses yet. Oops. She heard you. She said, yep. well, you said wait. Oh, that's right. So she waited. Yep. But she's, her question is, her roses are budded and starting to leaf. Yeah. Is it still okay to prune once they've started that? So I had a good customer come in. It's a regular. He's, he's here all the time. He goes, Ken, I've always waited till the second week in March. I've just listened to you, and it's always worked. But they're really growing. I feel the urge to prune. I'm going, listen, this is the last. This is the, it's March now. Go for it. I think the season's about three weeks ahead anyway. Yeah. Th- those few extra days is going to make no real difference. Ideally, when you prune roses, you do want to wait till you actually see new growth, new buds. That's your cue. Go ahead and prune roses. So and we're seeing that. They've grown at least a half inch. Ours, we're up at 5,700 foot. Mm-hmm. They're, they're actively growing now. So we've now f- kind of finishing up. I got one more rose in the back to finish up and then... We're done with all, all of our rose pruning. So I think you're good to go. Then fertilize either with your rose food with systemic or just the regular all-purpose plant food. And then spray it down with a good horticultural oil to get rid of the aphids. And you are ready to go. They will be bloom. You almost count on it. 45 days from now, they will be in bloom just like that. Okay. So great questions this week. Okay, Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. Be right back. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Hi, Waters with the plants of the week and our Roman Beauty Roseberry. This Mediterranean beauty has graceful, arching branches that flow over rock walls, raised beds, or container's edge. A culinary herb often used in potpourri. Rugged, deer-resistive, evergreen, likes crummy soil, drought, and abuse. Now that's my kind of shrub for under $36. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love unusual, healthy herbs, they love to shop. Some things are just better together. March is the best time to fertilize with all-purpose plant food from Waters Garden Center. But pair the all-purpose with humic acid, and it's a one-two punch of garden power. Humic acid gives your soil organic matter that helps plants' roots receive water and nutrients. So it makes fertilizer work even better. Like salt and pepper. Coffee and donuts. And hey, you and me. Ah. Thanks, Ken. All-purpose plant food and humic acid, better together, and only at Waters Garden Center. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lang. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lang. I did write a book called The Low Maintenance, no, The Complete Guide to Low Maintenance Landscaping. It's like a 60-page book. It's it's written by me. It's not repurposed Google stuff. It's actually our zones. It covers our uh, frost dates, plant dates, how to keep weeds down, what the best plants are for for native xeriscape, low just low maintenance landscapes. Uh, grass not included in that particular book. I've got other books that show you how to uh, grow grass. We've got handouts on that here at the Garden Center. Uh, But this book, it's free. It's meant to be a helpful guide. Uh, Some things I've learned over many years. Here it is in a nutshell for our, our, our climate. It'd be good for anyone in the high country. Once you get out of Phoenix, it's not a desert book. I guess some things could apply, but really it's written for mountain folks. Folks, once you come up I-17, up out of Black Canyon City, and once you crest the top of that, that, that elevation and higher, it's for us. The plants that are listed in that, it gives you a list of trees, a list of shrubs, a list of perennials, a list of ground covers, vines that are low maintenance. Uh, the evergreens, low maintenance. How to take care of them, when to fertilize them. It goes into detail for us in the mountains of Arizona. If you wanted a copy of that, I'm not charging for it. I probably should. It's had thousands of downloads already. I think it had uh, 2,000 downloads like last month. It's crazy. Uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm stunned. I'm surprised. I'm, I'm honored 
that people would th- find that a value. If that is something that is of interest to you, if you find, if you need to be more low maintenance, your thing is travel and cruise ships or not landscape and gardening, it's for you. You're, you're, you love a gardening, but you hate weeding. And you just don't know how to water things. It, th- that book's for you. It's got all the details, nitty gritty for us. If you want a copy of that, go to watersgardencenter.com. That's our website. It's at the very front. You'll see a picture, a video of the garden center, and a, and a, and a superimposed block that just says the complete free, complete guide to low maintenance landscape. Hit that, it's yours. It's in a PDF format, so you can read it on anything a desktop, a laptop, a phone, a, 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 an iPad, whatever format you like to read from. It'll be a digital copy. It's not a physical copy. I can't give away a physical book for free. There's got to be some printing costs. But a digital one, I, I can do that. But if you're, if you're coming into the season and you're just not sure where to go, if you're new to the area, please download it. It's an easy read. Lots of charts, lots of pictures, lots of graphs. You get to see my picture on the back cover. It's pretty good, I thought. Uh, the co- front cover had some help from had some help. So it's actually clean edited. It's meant to be a helpful for anyway, the complete guide to low maintenance landscaping for the mountains of Arizona. It's for us. It's not for your friend. It probably work in Denver, the mountain West, Idaho, Wyoming, uh, th- those areas, Utah, but it's really not for the East coast. It's just, we have totally different kinds of water, different kinds of soil. Now go into planting guides. How do you plant these, this new, spruce tree or pine or, or desert willow, whatever it is. How do you put those in the ground? It goes into all that kind of detail. Please, it's meant to be free for you for to help. Then if you hopefully it gets you smart enough where you can start asking the right questions. Now you can go to your local garden center and pick up on that and, and just go, oh, hey, so Ken was saying, who's this goofy Ken guy that your nursery's going to say, what's he talking about? Uh, that kind of agave doesn't grow here. Yes, it does. It grows up on the canyon. It's Utah Gensis. It's it's a artichoke agave. It's it's, it's a yucca. It's it's all these different kinds of cacti that you can grow here. It's got it. it they grow here. Uh, you'll have a list of all those plants you you can now pick from, uh, and, and choose what's right for you and your style and your backyard. Lisa and I we grow a lot of things in containers. In fact, most of our landscape in the backyard, I've abandoned the soil. It was so rocky, so hard, caliche layers, north slope. I was overwatering everything. So I basically put retaining block of the downhill slope. This is a classic mountain soil, mountain lot. It's got great views. Uh, it's a two-story house. You walk in the front story, the top story. You walk down the basement out to the backyard from down there. So it's, there's quite a bit of grade change. Uh, so we just basically put block at the low end of the hill and backfilled with good potting soil. That's what we did. And all of a sudden, everything lived. All of our tomatoes started producing. All the shrubs started blooming. The hummingbirds and butterflies started to flock into the yard because everything looks so luxurious. And, and it may be that some of you need to either dig a really big hole and amend it heavily so the soil will drain or... Have containers, have raised beds, create some some borders where you can have some real dirt in your yard to really make a difference. Some of you have been struggling too too long, and you really need to do that. And that's what we did. We've got, I don't know how many, dozens of raised beds throughout the entire yard. It's a half-acre lot, and things look good, and they are coming alive right now as we speak. Got more in store for you, but Lisa Watersling coming in the studio with her garden take right after this. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Hi, Lisa with the plants of the week and her majestic giant pansies. Mammoth blooms smother this 12-inch plant right through winter. Fragrant like its fairy face cousin, this giant bloomer has the perfect balance between evergreen foliage and flower brightness. Hardy and carefree, this pansy brings the garden back to life, all for just $7.99. 
You'll only find them at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love majestic pansies, they love to shop. Once upon a time, Fred the Sage and Bob the Yucca watched a herd of deer eat their neighbor's garden. Hey, Bob, said Fred. It's a good thing we're native Arizona plants from Waters Garden Center. Right, Fred, said Bob. We can handle tough Prescott dirt, hot sun, low water, and we look great in the garden. You betcha, Bob, said Fred. Hummingbirds and bees love us, but that deer sure doesn't. Be like Fred and Bob. Go native at Waters Garden Center. Safe, natural, and organic. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert, Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding, with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And we have Lisa Waters Lane back in the studio she comes each week and just shares her garden ideas. I think it's, it's the, the more gardeners you can get around a project, the more great ideas that will come together. Welcome back to the studio, Lisa. Thank you. So it's kind of fun. It's talking <clears throat> about gardeners and ideas. Uh-huh. Uh, on, on Wednesday of this week, mm-hmm. we had our garden happy hour. We, we <laughs> opened up. We, our team got together and said, wow, there's all these new people here in Prescott. Mm-hmm. And, and they're trying to connect. They're trying to figure out how to make new friends and get connected to the neighborhoods. And, and we see them here because they've got new homes. And we thought, well, we can help gardeners connect. Why don't we have a happy hour? We'll have a, like a garden project. We'll just let gardeners come together because they're all like-minded. And they did. We put it out. And it was a BYOB. You, you brought your own bottle, whether it's a Perrier or bottle of wine or whatever. Just everyone brought whatever they wanted. It's free admission. You brought a pot. We bring. We brought soil, and we had little ornaments and stuff. We made little succulent bowls, little succulent gardens. Yeah. We had over twenty-five people there, and they were had. They just had a ball. They were there for like two hours. It's hard to get them out of there. They were just enjoying each other so much, <laughs> and friendships were made yeah. at that. It was kind of yeah. fun to see people passing phone numbers and hey, I've got some iris for you. Why don't you come and get them? And just. Mm-hmm. That whole gardener thing that happens. It was fun. It, it, it's I like it because it's just so relaxed. And they're there to have fun. Yeah. They want to have fun. They want to meet new friends. And some of them, a group will come. So, And did a nice job. Yeah. There were some really pretty pots that they did up. If you want to see what they did, uh, Pinterest, we, set, we took a picture of everyone's gardens. And so these are little, little uh, southwestern bowls. We brought in all these exotic succulents, different colors. They're just playing with textures, colors. They came and put them all together, different sizes. I would say on average a foot to two foot size oh, pots, yeah. bowls, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And then we took pictures of them. We set up a Pinterest board so that we okay. could send that back out to them. If you want to yeah. see, if others, you know, listeners want to see that, it was just kind of fun. Um, go to Waters Garden Center, you know, Pinterest slash Waters Garden Center. You'll see... I forget what the board was called, but there's a bunch of boards there. It'd be the most recent board. You know how Pinterest works. You put all these this collage of pictures together, and you could see them all. There's other ideas there too, but yeah. uh, and then we sent that out to them. So you go, hey, good having you here. But anyway, yeah. just a lot of fun. How can local businesses make a difference in their community? And we believe we can make a difference. We can bring community together. This is just one more idea our team came up with and said, hey, why don't we try this? And we're crazy enough to go, uh, okay, let's try it. <laughs> just, it's fun. It was fun. We should do it again. In fact, a lot of people wanted us to do it again. They do, yeah. That's yeah. just we're getting so busy. I don't. I know. It's hard I'm, in those busy months. Yeah. Anyways. Why don't we go into what you got for us? Oh, Did you okay. get some ideas for us? Well, I do. So. This week, I wanted to talk about those blooming things that are great for those shady spaces in your yard. So either uh, an eastern side or a northern side that doesn't get, it's not hot and doesn't get a lot of heat on it. So, um, and people do have, people don't think those are around here, but they are. There's a lot of, well, every house has at least one north side. So you have (laughs) at least one shaded area. If it's a two, three story house, you've got a really dark shaded Mm -hmm. out area. And these plants would also be good if you're uh, in a pine forest or, you know, where you have very filtered light. So these plants would also be great for that. So some ones that we got in, of course, the Pyrrhus or the Lily of the Valley shrub. It's such a beautiful shrub. Oh my my goodness the white blossoms on it 
and they bloom so long in the spring. Really a worthwhile one to have. Uh, there's mountain fire, one variety. That one's cool because the new leaves that come out are a bright red. Oh, that's neat. So you get yeah. this bright red with the white blossoms. Very, very pretty. Silver, silver scissors? That can't be right. Silver something. Just name it and go with it. So <laughs> you got like four or five varieties out there. It's crazy. From, but it's a variegated one. So it's a green and kind of a cream colored leaf, white blossom. And then we got a new one this year that's really pretty. It's called Enchanted Forest Gay Goblin. Gay How Goblin. How they came up oh, with that name, I don't know. Yeah. But the really cool thing about it is it has pink, really dark pink blossoms so the foliage is dark green with these pink blossoms on it really attractive now i looked at that one and i would as a man i would call that red no it just looked red it looks pink. red oh. i wish heavens. i'd give i wish god had given me 64 crayons in my box instead of just seven but anyway that's too. it just uh, <laughs> <laughs> at least i know what Periwinkle, the color periwinkle oh, is there now. You go. So most of the purists get four to five feet, five feet wide, somewhere in there. Uh, so a nice one to fit into your yard. Rhododendrons are amazing. Um, a lot of people think, oh, we can't grow rhododendrons here. You can't grow azaleas here. Well, you can. They take a little more work than, say, a potentia. Uh, but you can certainly put them in, in the yards around I here. I think they're really tough. I mean, those uh, rhododendrons... There's some amazing roadies here. They got that thick leathery leaf which right. makes them that helps them defense against the the dryness. Mm -hmm. And then animals don't eat that. So right. deer, you can put them right out there with deer and javelina and antelope and deer, and they don't bother them at all. Right. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. Just the sun does. Well, yeah, sun. <laughs> More shaded areas. Yep. So one of the shorter varieties, it gets about three foot tall, is the its initials P J M. And it has a really pretty lavender blossom to it. Another shorter one is the Nova Zimbla, which has more of a red, and it truly is a red yeah. blossom on it as well. There's one called Double Shot Grape. I've not seen hmm. this one before. So it smaller it has a purple blossom hence the grape but the cool thing about it is it'll actually bloom twice oh repeat bloomer season. i love yes. it it's about time they came up with that that's really yeah. cool and then of course there's purple gem uh most people have probably that's kind of one that's been out for a long time is the purple gem of course a purple blossom mm -hmm. on it uh, and there's another new one i haven't seen before called pink treasure this one gets up five feet or so. Traditional size. Right. Yeah. Okay. It has a really pretty pink, uh, almost pendulous blossom to it. So a little bit different, uh, but another really cool one to put out there. And of course, camellias. You can't forget your camellias. So we have two varieties. One's called Spring's Promise, a light pink color. And the other one is April Remembered. And I think it's dark pink. I may have those mixed up. Yeah, it could I'm reverse them. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. No, and they've been in bloom for a month Day. or more than a month. They're still in bloom, and yeah. there's still a lot of buds on there. Uh, but another really pretty, a little bit bigger bush to put out in the yard. So. The other things that we got in this week, so that's kind of it for the shade blooming shrubs I wanted to mention, but we just got a truck in of some beautiful pansies and violas, and I thought I'd mention a couple of those oh, that are yeah. really cool right now. So in the violas, um, they do a, a, a grouping called their sorbet colors, and one is yellow frosted with dark purple. It is so pretty. Yeah, it they is just pretty. Kinda, yeah, it was amazing. I like how they... Uh, it's really they almost fade into each other the colors so it's really really pretty orange duet which of course is orange and purple if you're a suns fan you definitely yeah. need to have some yeah. of those in your yard and the other one is delft blue uh it's blue with a white center and there again the colors just kind of fade into each other very attractive uh, in the pansies we got a beaconsfield which has a really dark purple center but the outer petals are kind of a lavender color oh, so it's kind of yeah. the opposite of what you normally see with that dark center and it's just really really it still pretty. has the same you know like monkey face to it like a pansy no but then it's faded it's, it's, oh, it's not, not a monkey oh. face oh yeah. okay so Neat. it's just really different i'm gonna go look at that as soon as the shows are i'm gonna go over and take a look. Right over there. yeah <laughs> And then there's one called uh, Nature's Nature's Rose. And I was trying to think of the color. I felt like you. I couldn't describe the color. But it's just a real pretty, it's gotta be a rose color. 
pink, oh. huh. rose. Yeah, very attractive. Kind of a white center on that one. And then, of course, we got some stock in, which uh, so fragrant. Got to have some by your front door so when you walk in. If you're ready, the gar- if you just feel like you've got cabin fever and you want to get out, and you're not even ready to plant, your house isn't even done yet, you just want to come and get your garden feel, things mm-hmm. are starting to open up and you're seeing the leading edge of spring. The garden center has, no, I mean, in the peak of spring, the entire garden center is one huge garden all in bloom. But right now, you're walking through and you are seeing definite splotches of color. Oh, definitely. We cannot hold them back. They are just going into bloom. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Lisa. Good, good ideas. Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. Be right back. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Hi, Lisa with the Plants of the Week and our Winter Blooming Heat. With 2018 upon us, you might as well start the gardens outright with one of these few winter blooming flowers. Ferny evergreen leaves are topped by the sweetest of bell-shaped pink flowers. Loves to be planted right out in the yard. Enjoy showing off in winter at just $36. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love winter blooming heat, they love to shop. Wondering why my garden looks amazing? Well, that's personal. The personal garden shopper service at Waters Garden Center, that is. Before talking with my personal shopper, I had no idea which plants would be best for me. But now my garden is bursting with flowers and buzzing with hummingbirds. Just go to watersgardencenter.com, click on shop, and choose personal garden shopper. A Waters Garden expert will pick the perfect plants for you, personally. The personal garden shopper, only at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. There's a a list that I go through in my own yard that I start knocking out and just try to get done before the landscape really wakes up. And really, by the end of March... Uh, there's certain tasks that you really should get done or gardening will just be hard, difficult, or you'd be going backwards instead of forwards. This is my list. I thought I would share with you. There's basically nine things that I do, and I've done them all already. I'm, I'm, I'm completed. I'm finished. So it's, it's the end of February. I'm done. I can, I can finesse things a little bit if I need to, but I'm starting to plant now. So I'm done with the hard stuff. I'm, I'm into the easy stuff the fun part of gardening. And and first things first, the first thing I did, I finished this the earlier in February, finish pruning everything. I mean, get done, mow those perennials, the dead stuff back to the ground. You'll see that the mums are already starting to come up. Certain perennials, they're already starting to grow. You really need to knock that old growth back to the ground. Perennials, they hibernate underground and they come back fresh every year. That also includes your grasses, pampas grass, uh, uh, your coral forester grasses. Most of the grasses that are brown, you should cut them back, especially pampas grass. Pampas is that great big grass. It grows above head high with this beautiful, huge plume that's, that's been in bloom. Now it's looking kind of ratty. New growth is starting to come out, but then it's got all these, these brown blades on there. If you don't get that thing cut back, you're going to have brown and green blades all, all year long. It looks kind of rough. You're going, what happened? It's stressed out. What's going on? Cut it right back to about knee high. Just I take hedge, hedge shears and just I just trim them right back. The smaller grasses, I take a lawnmower and I just whack them right off or hedge shears or just really fast, cut them back, get them back to the ground. Open that heart up so that the sun can get to it. And now it will start encouraging new growth coming out. Prune back your fruit trees. Now, prune, prune things back. Get it done. Do your homework and figure out how to do it. Uh, from from roses, I think they can be done right now, to grapes, they can be done now, to your shade trees. I prune things up. I just pruned a, a sycamore tree up so I can get the mower, tractors, things underneath it without dinging my head. Uh, prune, th- Get done pruning things. Second, 
You need, you really need to put down your weed and grass stopper right away. Weeds are starting to grow like crazy. The weed and grass stoppers, what they do is they prevent the seed from ever getting started. So you never have a weed problem. Um, There's two basic types of weed and grass stopper I sell here at the garden center. I've got one from High Yield. It's called Weed and Grass Stopper. That's the name. Uh, it's it's the most popular. I've been selling it for decades. Uh, I think it's twenty bucks or twenty five bucks for a bag. It covers five thousand square feet. Most yards need like two bags. You put this stuff down, water it in, and it will keep the seed from ever coming up. It does not affect current trees, roses, shrubs, anything you have growing in your yard yard right now doesn't affect them. It only keeps the seed from coming up. And so you put this stuff down. The second one I have. It's twice as strong for like $5 more. So that's the one I use myself. It's called Weed and Grass Weed Beater Complete. It's got five or six additional weeds that it affects, but mainly it just lasts longer. It it affects more weeds and it just lasts longer. I like that. For $5 more, I'm going to do this like twice a year. I want want it more effectiveness. And so I do that. A bag covers 5,200 square feet and covers a little bit more. It's probably worth the extra five bucks if that if the if price is a concern, get the cheaper one. It's the one I've been selling for years. It also works. It gets rid of tumbleweed and whorehound and foxtail and goat head, all these nasty weeds. But you need to get done you need to get this thing on immediately because because weeds are growing now and once the weeds are growing, it doesn't affect them. It only affects the seed, not the weed. It keeps the weed from ever coming up. Third, watch for aphids. Aphids, I've already started to spot aphids out in my landscape. You'll know because the the new needles or the new uh, leaves have this glossy wet look. That's aphid dew. A- honeydew is what we call it, but it's aphid poo. And if you see that, they can really take over a, a tree, a shrub, very, very quickly. And so watch for it as you're working out in the yard. Just watch for that and be ready. I've sprayed mine with triple action. That's the name of of the product. It's an organic. It's neem oil, basically. It just obliterates aphids, and it's very safe. doesn't hurt your birds, your pets, that kind of stuff. Fourth, feed everything. Everything in the yard, from flower beds to trees to shrubs to fruit trees to flowering trees to lilacs to evergreens to privacy edges, everything needs to be fertilized by the end of March. I would say sooner rather than later. The season is hitting early this year. You really need to get on this. I sell two types. I've made two types of fertilizer. Here's what it comes down to. All-purpose plant food. It's 744 food. That's one I originally made 10, 12 years ago. The main ingredient is cottonseed meal and some bird guano, iron, sulfur, it's very safe, very natural, very, very, it's, it's good for our, our local landscapes and things really react well to it. That's the one you want to use for evergreens, privacy hedges. If you're just not sure, give it all-purpose plant food. It's, it's all-purpose, great for grass, perennial gardens, vegetable gardens. It's just an all-purpose, good, local, natural food. What's happening is this, this, food craze is is on i mean there are just people wanting to grow their own foods from berries and grapes and fruit trees to tomatoes and lettuce and kale i I created a a fruit tree and vegetable food it's purely organic Uh, it's made from meat meals and bone meals and feather meals just made for different kinds of organic meals that activate and work with our our trees our shrubs our vegetables, our blooming. It could also work on on evergreens and stuff, but but really it was designed specifically to keep your gardens organic and healthy. That and it's 6447. It's got an extra number in it. It's got a lot of calcium in it. We have a lot of calcium deficiencies in our yards, in our landscapes, in our gardens. So calcium is what fruits need to bring out the flavor and the size, uh, the quantity. It, It just makes tomatoes sweeter. It makes apples produce larger. It gives brings that flavor out in a peach. It just makes a difference. Those are the two. Get a bag of each and sling them around the yard. That's good. And do it by the end of the month. It's, it's, it's important. Fifth, I top dress my flower beds. So some of that soil disappeared. And so I'm top dressing with a two inch layer of either uh, manure for my vegetable gardens or 
mulch for my flower beds, or shredded cedar bark. I use a lot of shredded cedar bark. Shredded cedar is very pretty, smells good. The other benefit with cedar is it's it doesn't compost as quickly, so it stays on the ground, but I'm really trying to uh, keep that nutrient in the soil and then keep the frost, that freeze-thaw, from heaving the roots up out of the ground. I'm doing my roses, flower beds, uh, uh, things that are important that I, that the roots might be damaged by this freeze-thaw. Every day is warm, every night's cold. And it, it, it protects them, those roots. So things that bloom mainly is what I'm after. Trees, fruit trees. I'm, I'm like a three, four foot layer uh, around um, with a two inch layer of shredded cedar bark and it just makes everything happy and healthy. Now, six. Now is the time you start to extend, you start to aerate, you do all the lawn stuff. So get your lawns ready. I would take that all purpose plant food, put it on that. Rake it up. If you're going to overseed, do that now. The month of March is the perfect time to add, start, or extend a lawn. I mean, a physical mowing. I want the kids to wrestle and play soccer on the lawn. That kind of grass. Seven, treat your pine trees. I can't emphasize this enough. Treat your pine trees with plant protector. This is a systemic. You pour it right at the base of the tree, and it gets rid of pinion pine scale, Bark beetle, flathead borer. There's a whole bunch of things roaming the roaming the uh, the yard, looking for pine trees. We have all these pine forests, and most of our insects are they like they like the taste of pine trees. So protect them. You put this on once in spring, and you're done for the year. But if you've got a bunch of pine trees, and you, especially the ones that are valuable, you want to treat them every year with plant protector. Eight. Put your vegetable gardens get get them ready. You can start planting vegetables now. Uh, lettuce, kale, spinach, uh, all the leafy stuff you can put right now. And so I'm putting the 644 fruit and vegetable food in that area, and I'm adding calcium nitrate. Cal- again, trying to get more calcium on those gardens because we have calcium deficiency. You get blossom end rot and all kinds of stuff. But I'm getting those ready. And then nine, I just start planting. And that's the list, one through nine, of what I do in my own gardens. Be right back. You're listening to local garden expert, Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. The colors of spring are bursting at Waters 58th Spring Open House. Talk directly to our farmers as they show off the newest flowers, brightest evergreens, and freshest new bloomers. Friday, we show off this year's showiest plant introductions. Saturday and Sunday, it's impromptu garden classes, sidewalk art, and drawings. Join the garden fun at Waters Garden Center's 58th Spring Open House, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, March 13th through 15th. 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Some things are just better together. March is the best time to fertilize with all-purpose plant food from Waters Garden Center. But pair the all-purpose with humic acid and it's a one-two punch of garden power. Humic acid gives your soil organic matter that helps plants' roots receive water and nutrients. So it makes fertilizer work even better. Like salt and pepper. Coffee and donuts. And hey, you and me. Aww. Thanks, Ken. All-purpose plant food and humic acid, better together and only at Waters Garden Center. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert, Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. I was just mentioning the last segment, the nine garden tasks you really need to get done completed right now right away the the time is of the essence if you really want to make a difference if you're a little bit lower elevation you're two weeks late if you're at a high elevation yeah you got a couple more weeks to go but really all of us in, in the mountain areas we got high if you, we've got bright sunshine warm days cool nights these are the nine things you need to get done So cover that if you missed some of those. If you were driving, couldn't write them down as fast as you wanted, or you're making mental notes and already you've lost a couple, I did actually write out my list and made a garden blog out of that. So it was an article that went out to newspapers a couple weeks ago. That is available to you, watersgardencenter.com. 
Waters with two T's, W A T T E R S, gardencenter.com. You can find us if you want to. Uh, just say Siri, Waters Garden Center, give me their website, and it'll pop right up. Amazon, Google, they, they all know what to, to find us. Um, at the very top of that page, it's got blog. Just hit the blog button, and it will pop up. And I think it was two weeks ago. It says the, what does it say? The the task you need to complete now. You, you'll figure it out. It's right there. The whole list is right there for you. You can print it out, share it, read it on your phone, iPad, desktop, whatever. It's there for you if you happen to miss one of the items or just wanted more detail, more depth. I think I put embed links on that. All There's ways to get around and see things. Um, and then at the front page, uh, right there on that, you'll see a video of the garden center. It's, it's an aerial drone shot. It's pretty kind of neat. I'm kind of proud of it. Uh, download the low-maintenance landscape, how to take care of it. The complete guide to low-maintenance landscapes. It's a free book I wrote. Uh, last year, and it's it's getting rave reviews. It's getting a, a lot of downloads, but it's made for us in the mountains of Arizona specifically or the Mountain West. It's made for high-altitude gardens with alkaline soil and bright days and wind. It's made for us. If That's, hit, that's free as well. So it's like 50, 60 pages. It's not a printed copy. It's actually a PDF format you can read at your leisure, on your whatever your device is in anymore. I, I do most of my reading either with audiobooks or my iPad. That's how I read things. I do a lot of news articles through my phone while I'm in the private room of the water closet. I just do a lot of reading. It's just it's so convenient to have that, to keep up to date. Um, an invite for you folks out in Spring Valley. I actually booked. I'm going to be your guest speaker March 10th, a couple weeks. When's that? week and a half from now. I'm coming out to Spring Valley. That's Mayor, uh, Cordis Junction, that area. So I-17, I, you know, 69. I'm coming out to share the weed-free gardens, my secrets to easier care in the landscape with less less bugs and less weeds. And then I'll show off a few things by March 10th. We should we've got some really nice plants coming in. They're new. You will be the first ones to see it. So I'm bringing my little show, my little dog and pony show, show out to you. It lasts about an hour. It's seven o'clock. It's at the Spring Valley Community Center. Can't wait to be out there. You, you've had me back for years anymore. Got a lot of great followers out there. A lot of great listeners. A lot of great customers that come in all the way from Spring Valley, Mayor Cordes Junction. Thanks for that support. But it should be should be pretty good. Uh, usually about. I don't know, 50 people or so show up. So uh, Spring Valley Community Church, 7 o'clock. If you want, you can come to the potluck at 6.30. That's my favorite part. Uh, that's half the reason that I say yes every year because the potlucks are just so good. Anyway, uh, looking forward to it. Uh, the weed-free gardens in Spring Valley. Throughout the week, Lisa and I camp out here at Waters Garden Center. We do actually, we're here often, and we love talking to fans of the show. Please come by and visit. The colors of spring are bursting at Waters' 58th Spring Open House. Talk directly to our farmers as they show off the newest flowers, brightest evergreens, and freshest new bloomers. Friday, we show off this year's showiest plant introductions. Saturday and Sunday, it's impromptu garden classes, sidewalk art, and drawings. Join the garden fun at Waters Garden Center's 58th Spring Open House, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, March 13th through 15th. 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.